begins over, so uh, get settled down, get out your notebooks. If you have not yet read chapter 12, I suggest you start soon. It's a good introduction to Linnaeus and his theories. That is what we are going to be covering today and tomorrow, mainly for the week. Remember, we were discussing Mr. Ellis. Nice of you to join us. Please find your seat. For the weekend, we were discussing the taxonomy with respect to phylogenetics. This is the classification system in which all organisms are well, classified. Now, as I was saying, Linnaeus grouped organisms into five categories called kingdoms. These kingdoms have changed over the years, but the basic formula still remains the same. Let me go ahead and put these up on the board. We have starting with Monera. Protista, fungi, plantae, and the one you are all most intimately familiar with, that animalians lack a nucleus and several other prominent organelles common to the eukaryotic cell, such as the Golgi apparatus or the endoplasmic reticulum. Animalians came onto the evolutionary scene along with the echinoderms. Now that's where it all gets interesting as we see bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry brings with it a whole slew of surprises, not least of which is the brain. Notochords, as well as separate orifices for ingesting food and expelling waste, accompanied bilateral symmetry as well. Arthropods, reptilia, avies, mammalia, etc., etc. And what I was really interested in in this unit is how it all fits together. We learned the background already. term, Mr. Ellis, what is the term that I am looking for? Oh. Um. <clears throat> um. Um. Eto... Uh, eto ecology? Hmm. It would appear as if you weren't listening to a word that I've been saying. But apparently that is not the case. Yes. Etoecology is the correct answer. Very good, Mr. Ellis. It is also referred to as behavioral ecology. Now, if an organism has a trait which provides them with a selective advantage in the environment, 